doesn't love this time of year? For one thing, the weather is beautiful, the holidays are coming, you want your yard and your home to look their best. So we are so happy to welcome Kath Shaw True Love, who has a great store on the south side called Bees on a Bicycle. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for having me today. I have to tell you, first of all, I'm a name <laughs> person. And I'm still I'm still a phone book person. I mean, I'm old school. Okay. But if I were looking through trying to find a cute boutique to go to for my house and I saw Bees on a Bicycle, I'm there. Oh. I love the name. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. How did you get the name? Then we'll get oh. to your inventory. Okay. Well, my hobby is photographing murals. And I photograph, gosh, three or four hundred of them, and it's my favorite mural. And it has bicycle, uh, bees on little unicycles. And when I was talking to a girlfriend about the name of this business, I said, no, it'd be more like a whole bunch of bees on one bike working <laughs> together, you know, one by, you know, bees on a bicycle working together like a little community. And so then I said, oh, my gosh. And we immediately looked up to see if the URL was available and all of that. And it was. It was. So it really is a fitting name because you really are about working together together. People are welcome to come into the shop yep. uh, and explore your talents and choose from what you've created for their home. Mm -hmm. But you have classes. People can come and learn from your expertise on how to create things on their own. Oh, absolutely. And we also have a potting station where people can come. Sometimes people bring their nieces or their daughters or their sons. We've got a lot of high schoolers that come bringing their parents. So it's not just the older people bringing the younger ones. Often it's the younger ones bringing the, the older ones. Um, and they work together and pot something up sometimes for the very first time and we we help them with any questions they have and help them pick a container that might be appropriate for what they're choosing okay so let's get into it because there are <laughs> lots of places to choose from everybody has different plants and things around the home but if you're if you're artistic if you love that wow factor and I, I do okay. uh, you create that and it doesn't always have to be in very expensive ways so you're getting us ready for the season uh, without having to go with bright oranges and blacks right right well one of the things orange and black to me seems a little bit garish and it might not be everybody's favorite color combination and so I've come up with a few things that are more in the orange and red mm -hmm. which is still autumnal and of the season the harvest and that sort of thing right but not necessarily Halloween okay so look at this for example uh, this beautiful planter which in and of itself is gorgeous thank you great on a porch in a sunroom on a on a back patio you name it where there's some Sun but you've brought in the color this is a grass that's a Mexican feather grass and what I love about that Julie is the movement when it I planted a whole bunch in a really tall planter at bees uh -huh. and it just blows in the wind it's really wonderful and people do exactly what you're doing is they touch it like Soft. stroking yeah it's really wonderful if you and have a cat the cat would love it <laughs> and pretty much yes what and is then, this that's hypericum which is it's a border perennial so you put it in a in I plant it just for the foliage and mm -hmm. the foliage this time of year is really interesting it's got oranges and reds and, it, and it's in miniature form. It gets to be about a foot or two mm -hmm. in a border. But because we planted it in this small container, it's almost like a bonsai right. where, it, where it's kept small. And it will allow you then the same color as a mum would, but a mum lasts two or three weeks. This is going to last you as long as you want it. Absolutely. It would last for years and years. And so when people initially buy perennials, sometimes they are like, wow, this is a little bit different. It's not $4.99. It's, it's more in the $10 range. And so sometimes people react react to that, but what they don't realize is that you might have that five, ten years. Right. And so your investment is huge. Okay. I also love what you've done with the rocks. I recently took a trip to Ireland and I brought home some rocks from the river, <laughs> Shannon. Uh, and this is a great idea of what to do with them. Before we get to some other things, you mentioned different color variations on the autumnal theme. Let's talk about what's in front of you because that's beautiful. Well, thank you. This is a coleus, which is a summer plant. A lot of people um, put it in containers, but why not just continue it on to the autumn. Mm -hmm. um, I, I paired it up in a planter that is yellow, so you've got your yellow and, and red, mm -hmm. which is a color combination you usually wouldn't do, right. but in the autumn, it's appropriate. These are blooms from the coleus. Um, it's just at the end of its growing season. Um, it, it's a summer grower. Uh -huh. um, it's clearly grown quite a bit because it came from a little three-inch pot, Yeah. and so this is pretty much how big they can get, and I've actually pruned this back a couple times. So you are a big believer on, on maximizing a dollar. You understand that, and plus 
once you get attached to a plant. So you, it's always sad at the end of the season when you have to get rid of it. So even just looking ahead to next spring when you're buying your annuals, maybe get one and think about how you can use it ahead into Absolutely. fall. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think one of the things, we're all kind of reacting to too much stuff. The, I'm, somebody came into my shop one time, Julie, and they looked around and they looked at everything and they're like, are you a minimalist? <laughs> and I was like, yes, I am. And still I have all of these things that, that I'm talking about and sharing with people. Right. But the thing is, if we select a few things really carefully that we treasure, mm -hmm. that's kind of what Bees on a Bicycle is about. And so there's just really things, for example, this urn, it's got pillows in it, which right. are appropriate for the season, and so you can throw these around. Um, but this, it's got a nice purple color, like um, aubergine mm -hmm. or eggplant color. Mm -hmm. And what a great way you could use this to serve punch. And then in the spring, you could plant something in it. Right. And so you, you're maximizing your investment with something that you really treasure. I also love the little birds that you brought. Sometimes you just <laughs> need some height variations or just a little yeah. accent piece. You said you can use, combine two of these at a season. Yes, exactly. So we've got ways. three here. We've got red, yellow, green. So my idea is if you want, you could do the red and yellow one for your autumn. So let's say you've got a uh, buffet and you've got your food laid out. You mm -hmm. can put these guys in there. Okay. One of the things I think we're all reacting to all in news. There's a lot of news that isn't very pleasant. Right. And I think it's important that um, when, we, when we're subject to that, that we have a little bit of whimsy in our life. So that's yeah. why we've got these guys and this fox and there's another fox down here. It allows us to smile and relax a little bit. But hold on, just, just yep. a sec. Sorry, yep. I'm on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the, the red and yellow, but then you take the yellow one out for the Christmas right. season. So again, maximizing your investment for the red and green. Okay, here's where I wanted to go because you touched on something you mentioned as a, a centerpiece, if you will. Okay. You're not just for the garden, right? You have different ideas for helping people to entertain and table setting ideas. It's oh, a yeah. variation of... of offerings that you have. Absolutely. Um, my formal training is in interior design and architecture and so this sort of thing is very comfortable for me. I've had a gardening company and I've worked at garden centers and so it, it, it goes from design from one kind to the other. You have some of the same design principles that that apply to a garden at the, that apply to a living room or the layout of a building. And so form, space, order, balance, perf um, color theory. And, and you are welcome. <laughs> I mean, there you can see the store. You are so welcome and encouraged, actually. If you have an area of your house you're not quite sure what to do with, you have a front porch that gets too much shade and you're not sure what to plant, you can bring your requests to Kath and she'll help you with ideas. She'll do it <laughs> for you. Or again, she'll teach you how to do it. Uh, something else that people, as they get older, my mom loves to garden. Okay. But she's getting older and it's harder for her to pick up heavy things. Things. Okay. But people don't want the look of plastic mm -hmm. containers. These are lightweight, beautiful ones that you've brought, but you would never know they're plastic. Oh, that, those I love. Um, one of the things that I did when I started Bees on a Bicycle, it's like, how can I, because I, I'm making buying decisions for hundreds of people that come into the shop and, and look for things. That's an alternative to plastic. It's made out of husks. Oh, so we have the part of rice that we can digest in our in our stomachs, mm -hmm. but we have the part of rice that we can't, um, that cows can digest, but we can't. And it's made from the husk. Beautiful. And so that biodegrades in years instead of decades, whereas plastic biodegrades in decades and decades and decades. So that's much more environmental and safe for us. Okay, again, your idea of maximizing space, this gorgeous <laughs> Planter. I mean, it's a piece of art. And it smells really. good, too. And it yeah. smells, this is herb. <laughs> yeah. I was surprised to hear that really you should keep your herbs outside in the winter. They need the cold to kind of die off and then regrow. Well, the, right? it, it helps to harden off your herbs and give them a full growth cycle. Mm -hmm. And so when something's a perennial, um, it, it helps to have it outside. So I had an herb herb garden, not this particular one, but a different one that wintered over in a pot right right at my space, right on Market Street, all winter, and it did fine right there. And so 
But if, if you want to bring it into your kitchen and eat your herbs in the winter, go for it. Or That's if you're a nice having thing. a party and yeah. Thanksgiving's coming up and you want to just wow your guests <laughs> uh, and put some fresh uh, herbs in a meal for them to watch you do. Oh, absolutely. And those are all the herbs that we typically use on Thanksgiving. For example, oh sage and, and, marjoram, this is and the marjoram and lemon thyme, which is the one you're touching. This the is front. the one. I can't, who needs perfume <laughs> if you have lemon thyme? You, and, and I think the quality of the plant matters because I've rubbed some and they don't smell as much. Mm -hmm. Yours, Oh my gosh, they're fantastic. You just have to have a big, strong person to carry this in for you. Because uh, you've got this planted very well. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's a big planter. It's got six different herbs in it. But we certainly have smaller planters, like the ones that are in front right there. Yep. Um, where you can put one or two that somebody can easily just carry um, right along. I, I could stay and just talk to you all day. <laughs> thank uh, you. But I want to get people your way so that they can have the fun of coming and talking to Kath all day. The store again is called Bees on a Bicycle. Uh, you'll find her down on Market Street. The phone number, it's a 703 number, but she's very much here locally. So 703-225-9686 yes. online, beesonabicycle.com. If you're getting married, you want a fun thing to do with your bridal party, she does things like that. Interior decorating, you come and do it yourself. It's just got that artistic flair to make your life happy. Thank well, you. Thank you. I'm so glad that I could come today. It Don't be a stranger. Fun. <laughs> a ton of fun. <laughs> We're back after this. <laughs>